Hello, my name is Kate Crowley and I work for the University of Edinburgh. I'm going to be talking to you for a few minutes about the impacts of climate change. So what do I mean by impact? Well, I'm going to be talking about impacts in two ways. Firstly, in terms of how climate change is affecting our weather and climate systems. So seeing more extreme weather events and changes in temp uh, daily temperatures. And then also I'm going to be talking about the consequences of those things on people and the environment. So just like this picture shows, we might see more uh, intense flood events, and this may destroy infrastructure such as roads and have a major impact on the communities that live in that area. And so we're going to be discussing impacts in terms of the consequences. And when we talk about consequences for people in the environment, we like to talk about direct impacts, so the direct damage that you might see on a road or a building, but we also talk about indirect impacts. So if we think about that road that was destroyed by a flood event, perhaps there are communities that needed that road in order to get to work. And so there might be people who lose their livelihoods. There might be school children who can't get to school. There might be people who have to take alternative routes and that costs them money. And so indirect impacts are very important when we're looking at climate change and the effects that we're seeing on people and the environment. Indirect impacts can also mean things like a loss of culture, a movement of people, and in a very worst case, it could even trigger things like conflict and loss of livelihoods. And so it's really important for us to have a good understanding of the connections between the emissions that we're putting into the atmosphere and the rising global temperatures that we're experiencing and how this plays out in terms of changes in our weather and our climate so and our natural environment such as warming oceans and rising sea levels and more extreme um, hazard events and then the consequences of that um, leading to damage of infrastructure and people's homes um, leading to more pests and diseases and movements of these things and the impact of that on our health but also on the natural environment as well also things like uh, flooding of coastal regions increased damage to marine ecosystems and changes in our seasonality for growing crops so the, the, key, the key impacts in terms of our weather and climate system um, are changes in our temperature, so more ex hotter days and hotter nights, but also extreme temperature events such as heat waves, sea level rise. So as the oceans warm, they expand, and also as temperatures rise, we melt the ice caps, leading to increased sea level rise. And we're going to see a change in the patterns and intensity of rainfall. So we might see more intense rainfall events leading to rapid flooding and large scale flooding events. And we might see um, increases in warming and acidity of oceans. And this is really important for our marine ecosystems. So how will these affect our food and our livelihoods? Well, there are going to be multiple impacts for us. And if we think about the things we need every day, like food and water, then we're going to see quite significant impacts on the foods that we buy in the shops, the price of that food. And this is because we're going to see a change in crop yields globally. So certain crops are not going to be able to grow because of the conditions they're facing, or they could be affected by extreme weather events. And also fresh water supplies globally are going to decrease. And this is particularly important in areas that rely on snow melt or glacial melt waters. And we're also going to see impacts on our livelihoods. There's clearly a connection between changing crop yields and agriculture. And so um, farmers all around the world are going to have to change the way they farm. They might have to change to different crops and they might suffer quite significant losses due to flood and drought and extreme storms. As I've said, the oceans are changing, becoming more acidic and warming, and this may lead to major problems for our fisheries industries. We might also see new pests arrive on our shores 
that might affect our forests and lead to issues in terms of forest production. And we may also have impacts to tourism. Certain areas might not be um, to tolerable, might be too hot to visit, such as the Mediterranean, and that area will be affected by a decrease in tourism. Or the ski resorts won't have any snow and therefore will have to close. And many of these issues, although we're looking globally, have impacts locally. And an example of this, this idea of our global connections across the world, took place in 2011. In China, where they grow a lot of wheat, there was a big drought. And this led to a failure of the, the wheat crops in that year. And they grow so much wheat that it affected the international wheat market and wheat prices doubled. Now this led to an increase in bread prices globally. And in particular, this created an additional stress in places that were already under a lot of tension for many other reasons. And in Egypt, for example, where there was a lot of political turmoil, people were really suffering already, bread prices tripling was the final straw. People couldn't cope with the situation any longer and this led to civil unrest. So a drought in China impacting global wheat prices was a tipping point for places that are already under stress, such as Egypt and led to the Arab Spring. And if you look at images of the Arab Spring very early on in the riots, you'll see people with bread on their heads and they're rioting because of the bread prices. So a direct impact in one location has an indirect impact in another. Now I mentioned that fresh water is, is something we all need to survive and we need it not just for drinking water but also for agriculture and production. So in Bolivia, they're facing, some communities are facing a really serious problem where glacier and snow melt has decreased significantly over the last few years and they're no longer able to live in the communities that they used to. They're no longer able to irrigate the land and no longer able to access fresh water. Now there's a longer video that goes with this image and I do um, encourage you to have a look at it. And it tells you the human impact, the human story behind the impact of, of climate change in Bolivia and South America more widely. In the short term, increased snow, snow more water, increased snow melt, will lead to flooding, which is really serious. But in the long term, they're facing a situation where they have no longer got access to fresh water. And so if you lose your crops, you lose your livelihoods, you lose your fresh water, there'll be serious impacts in terms of your health. Now, changes in our climate may lead to extreme weather events that can lead to direct fatalities. People will die in drought events and in floods but it could also move diseases that will affect our health around the world. And we may see things like malaria becoming more prominent in Europe and in the UK. But also if we lose our crops, if we lose our food, then we might see more famine. And then of course, the built environment, something we all rely on every day, it's going to be impacted by climate change. And this could lead to direct damage of buildings and infrastructure that can lead to obvious consequences for our energy and water supplies, but it could also lead to cultural heritage loss. So buildings like in Venice, where we've got a World Heritage Site underwater because of sea level rise and increased intensity of rainfall. In cities, we're likely to see um, more heat waves. And in cities, this, uh, cities intensify heat waves. And so we've seen recent examples where heat waves have had major effects on cities and the wide on our wider communities. And an example of this happened in 2003 and Europe suffered greatly from a major heat wave event and 50,000 people were killed. This is very close to home and what we learned from that experience was that cities are at high risk but it was the most vulnerable people living in our cities that have had the worst impacts. And many um, of our elderly communities died during this event. And in particular in Paris, 
15,000 uh, in France, in Paris, 15,000 people died. And a lot of those people who died were the more elderly, more vulnerable members of our community. So if we're going to see an increase in droughts that are going to last longer, be more intense, as well as flooding, then we're likely to see an increase in the movement of people around the world as well. And since 2008, we've seen 22 million people move, being displaced, being made homeless due to floods and droughts. Scientists also estimate that if we don't do anything about the emissions that we're pumping into the environment, then we're likely to see a 200% increase in flood damage in Europe by the end of the century. So that's under the worst case scenario where we don't do anything to try and remove or reduce emissions. But it's staggering and it's shocking. And so not only are we gonna see impacts on our key infrastructure due to storms and erosion and flooding, but we're already seeing irreversible loss of key ecosystems around the world. And I want to share a really shocking example with you. Coral reefs around the world are suffering more than probably any other ecosystem at the moment. If we can ensure that we don't raise global temperatures more than 1.5 degrees, then we might save a very small amount of the coral reefs, but we're likely to lose 70 to 90 percent. If we don't do that, if we fail and we can't and and we look at a future where we've got a two degree, just two degree increase in global temperatures, then we're likely to lose all our coral reefs globally. And this would be a tragedy beyond all measure. So we have to look at both the hazards. We have to look at our changing weather patterns and our climate system in order to understand impacts. But we also need to look at us. We need to look at people and society and how we interact who is more vulnerable than others, who has capacity in order for us to understand impact and do something about some of the impacts that we're likely to see. So people are impacted in many different ways, depending on who they are and where they live. And it can affect their ability to adapt. And so it's really important that we understand not just the hazard, but we understand people as well. Now, it seems like I've told a very sad and gloomy story, but understanding our impacts is the first step to actually taking action and doing something to reduce the risks that we face. And we can reduce the risks. We can protect our homes and families and livelihoods, and we can make a difference. Thank you so much.